Good morning. My name is Larry Pittman, and uh, I'm going to start off the new year. This is January 1st, and I'm going to start off with my daily reading plan. The plan I've been promising to tell you about, um, that I invited people to, to follow me along in the Word for 2013, starting with Genesis today and ending with Malachi on December 31st. So we have 365 days that all starts today and I just started kick us off with our first reading um, so today I'm gonna use my bookmarker that's what I just cut out our friend John Eilers of the Bible team made these so you can see how it starts on January 1st Genesis 1 through 3 Genesis 4 through 6 is tomorrow okay so we're gonna start there and uh, I got my brand new um, uh, New Living Translation and it's giant print. Let me show you. I can't. Let's see. Uh, there we are. See how big it is? Okay, so cool. So we're going to get started. Um, first, we're going to pray. Uh, dear Lord, we, we praise you. We thank you for this new year. Thank you for keeping us safe to, to last another year. The world's there, still here. Uh, the church is still here. And um, Lord, we, we praise you and we thank you for uh, your promises that you, you hold for us. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word is always fresh to us. That the stories are familiar, but your blessings from these stories are new and we pray that the word may be as fresh to us this year as has been in the past Lord uh, make our hearts soft and um, and we pray Lord that your word is like soothing uh, salve to our skin and um, refreshing water to a parched throat and Lord, that's what we pray. We pray for um, uh, a great blessing in your word today. Lord, as I read, um, open our hearts so that we might hear your word. Speak to us, Lord, as we read your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness night. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the first day. Then God said, Let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. God called the space sky. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the second day. Then God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place so dry ground may appear and that is what happened God called the dry ground land and the water seas and God saw that it was good then God said let the land sprout with vegetation every sort of seed bearing plant and trees that grow seed bearing fruit these seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And that is what happened. The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seed-bearing plants, and trees with the seed-bearing fruit. Their seeds produced plants and trees of the same kind, and God saw that it was good. And evening passed, and morning came marking the third day. Then God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days, and years. 
let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And that is what happened. God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day and the smaller one to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, to govern the day and night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the fourth day. Then God said, Let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created great sea creatures, and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water, and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply. Let the fish fill the seas, and let the birds multiply the earth. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind. Livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and wild animals, and that is what happened. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock, and small animals, each able to produce offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God said, Look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth, and all the fruit trees for your food. I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. And that is what happened. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was all very good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the sixth day. Genesis chapter 2 So all the creation of heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation. So he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was that it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. When the Lord God made the man made when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. For the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth. And there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all the land. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Then the Lord God planted a garden in, in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden he placed the tree of life, in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed from the land of Eden, watering the garden and then dividing it into four branches. 
the first branch called the Pishon flowed around the entire land of Havilah where gold is found. The gold of that land is exceptionally pure. Aromatic resin and onyx stone are also found there. The second branch called the Gihon flowed around the entire land of Cush. The third branch called Tigris the Tigris flowed east of the of the land of Asher. The Lord branch, the fourth branch, is called the Euphrates River. The Euphrates. The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, "You may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge." Of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground all of the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And the man chose a name for each one. He gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, and all the wild animals. But still there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord took one of his one took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, this is one this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. Genesis chapter 3 The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord, had, Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit? from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman retire, replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful, and it looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, It was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, to, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the animals, 
domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live, and I will cause hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth, and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of, of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grains. By the sweat of your brow you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Then the man, Adam, named his wife Eve, because she would be the mother of all who live. And the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. Then the Lord God said, Look, like, look, the human beings have become like us, knowing both good and evil. What if they reach out, take fruit from the tree of life, and eat it? Then they will live forever. So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden, and he sent Adam to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending them out, the Lord God stationed mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden, and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the Tree of Life. So that concludes our reading. Genesis 1-3. through 3, um, That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to add a little bit of commentary beyond that. If you still want to take the time, um, you can follow along with me. In Genesis chapter 1, um, I, I take this for what it says. Genesis 1 is pretty straightforward. The whole book of Genesis, mind you, is, is a historical account from, from the perspective that God gave Moses, whoever wrote it, Moses might have had other writings, Moses might have had... Um, stories that were told to him handed down but I believe it was divinely inspired I believe that Moses wrote exactly what God wanted him to write and I believe what Moses wrote was was just this I mean the, the book of Genesis is just a straight shot account of a period of time up until uh, up until um, the death of Joseph when they're in Egypt, right? So we start from the very beginning. Um, it starts off Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's the begin beginning of time. It's, it's the beginning reference point that, that we need as humans to understand, okay, this is when time began. He created the heavens and the earth. He didn't create the sun yet. He didn't create the earth yet. I, well, actually, Earth was created in day one, sorry. He, he created the earth and the heavens, but there was no sun, there was no stars. They didn't have until day four. Um, he did create light. There was light. And we don't really know exactly what that light is. We know that God is light, and that um, when, when you read Revelation, which has just got done from last year, you learn that um, we're not going to need the light of sun in heaven. So that light... I, I reckon it's, it's the same light that we'll have when we when we pass this life. Um, so, to me, the only reason the only, the only way Genesis chapter one makes sense is to take it word take take it at its word. Um, and a couple key things, you know, people like to argue about the word day that we don't know how long day was. Well, the word day um, in Hebrew was. It's the word yom, y-o-m, and my understanding. Again, you know, I'm not a scholar, but.
but um, anywhere else that's translated throughout all of scriptures, the majority, the vast majority of, of the, where it's used is used as a literal period of day. Not only that, but in context, it says, um, an evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. So we have the context of morning and evening for each day. So when do we use morning and evening for any time other than a regular day? And then we have first, second, third, fourth. Um, to me, it, this chapter absolutely makes no sense unless you take it for face value. And that's all I'll say about that. Um, the only other thing about Genesis chapter 1 is everything is good. Everything's very good. And up until the curse, up until Adam and Eve sins, everything's good. So as it says in Romans, um, with Adam's sin came death. And I think that's very clear in these first three chapters. Uh, Paul understood this very, very well. So everything's very good, and the only reason we have thorns and thistles is because of sin. So it just leads me to believe everything was supposed to be perfect. Everything was supposed to be good and lush, and we don't have a perfect world uh, because of sin. We have pain and suffering because of sin. There's so much to talk about, but I'm not going to be um, taking up too much more time. Um, in in chapter three, we see uh, the blame game. Um, Satan causes Eve to sin, and Eve hands it to her husband. They're all to blame, every one of them. Of course, Adam says it was the woman you gave me, and Eve says it was the snake, and um, they failed to take responsibility, which, of course, um, don't we all? We all have that issue. We all want to blame. And until we say yes, Lord, <laughs> um, you know, we're not we're not taking responsibility. Yes, Lord, it was me. Yes, Lord, I'm to blame. Yes, Lord, I'm the cause of that problem. So, um, I love how in Genesis it wasn't you know that the woman ate and then the man you know said, "Hey, you're not supposed to do that." I mean. He could have, but um, you know what was God going to do with that? What was God going to do with one one human that sinned and the one that didn't? I mean, we have no idea. I, I just like to think about it. But um, bottom line is, they both sinned. They're all culpable. They're all um, in on it together. Um, so I just find it interesting. And um, that's all I'll share about um, Genesis 1 through 3. If you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to email me. It's not that I know everything, but um, I can typically figure out, um, you know, answers. Um, I have resources and, and I, have, I have opinion myself, but, um, you know, some answers are, are easier than others. Some can never be answered. Um, but um, we all, oh, yeah, another observation I wanted to make was um, they were all vegetarians. Um, man, uh, Adam and Eve were told to eat fruit of the ground, uh, fruit, fruit from the, from the, you know, the fields, and, um, also for the wild animals, to eat for the fruit. So we didn't have wild animals killing wild animals, and that happens after the flood. So there's another big difference between, um, the pre-flood days and, um, and, and today, because after the flood, it says you're, you're going to eat, um, the creatures. And um, so that's a, just another interesting observation. There's so many to make, and if you've made anything um, that, that want to add, you want to add to it, um, you can post it um, on Facebook. Um, but anyway, that's my start, and I don't, I'm not going to be doing this every day. And I might do this, you know, once a week. Have a reading every every week, and uh, I'd like your feedback, good or bad. Um, share your feedback. What we read, it took us about almost 20 minutes to read. So just almost 20 minutes to read. Um, three chapters, and that's what I want to do. I'm just going to read. When I do read, I'll, I'll just read um, the straight text and then add commentary, which, you know, for what it's worth, 
are just my observations. But um, anyway, God bless you all. Have a great year, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.